Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got some topics to go through and we're going to go for 200 likes on this video as well. If you guys did hit the like button, we'll aim for 200. Thank you very much. Let's get into the first topic. We have Chelsea see 40 million euro bid rejected for Atletico Madrid star. Looking into the picture, we're looking for Marcos Lorente. Now this one to me is so strange, so out of left field, so take it with a pinch of salt maybe. But it says one player they're now showing an interest in is Atletico Madrid midfielder Marcos Lorente, with AS, I believe they're a Spanish publication, reporting that Chelsea have had a 40 million bid rejected for the 27 year old. So let's take a look at him, I'm sure you're all aware of him, he's you know, a European player. At 27 years old, right footed midfielder valued at about 62 million. Um, and plays pretty much anywhere through the midfield or up on the right, but you can see his heat map from last year was heavily right-sided. Managed zero goals and two assists, so nothing outstanding, even if we were deploying him as a sort of wing-back, which would make sense because Reese James on that right-hand side, you know, we need cover for that. But the output is an amazing, passing stats are okay, and then, you know, aerial duels one kind of weak, and ground duels one a decent at 54%. Average self scoring for the year 6.91%. We can see some heavy injury blips here, so would almost certainly have to be a rotational player if we were to get him. But that all depends on how much you believe this report. Um, seeing this come out of left field, no other reporters on you know the Chelsea side or any other big ones, you know, like Fabrizio Romano, none of them even talking about this. So likely needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Um, maybe there were just some discussions and verbal ideas for 40 million being thrown around maybe earlier in the window and Chelsea threw that in maybe decided they didn't want it or Atletico Madrid did reject it and that was it I think this might be manipulated a little bit but maybe we never know maybe in the next couple of days we'll see more of this coming out but I think that's a little bit unlikely next up from Ben Jacobs we have Chelsea confident latest offer for Aubameyang will be accepted they yet to discuss personal terms with him with a meeting scheduled later today as reported yesterday Javi has told Aubameyang he's part of his plans. Tuchel has also spoken to Aubameyang and convinced him, and uh, is convinced he'll move. So that's a good sign. Tuchel pretty convinced that we're going to get this one done, assuming a fee is met. Um, and it goes on to, you know, that the latest offer will be accepted, and we're confident of that on the Chelsea side of things. So let's take a look at something else. We have this report coming from Rel uh, Relevo, saying Chelsea is going to make a formal offer to Barcelona for Aubameyang in the next few hours. So by the time you see this video, maybe that will have changed and it will be out. The first offer of 14 million, that might well be in euros, I'm not sure, was only verbal. Predisposition of all parties for it to be done. So everyone's looking for this one to be finished. 14 million was only verbal, and now the next official offer in the coming hours. So we'll see how it goes and what that fee is going to be. But it's going to be higher than 14 million. So already I think that's a lot to pay for a 33 year old. I know Tucker wants him, so I, I back it, but I can have my opinion, and I do think this one is a potential banana skin for Chelsea in this transfer window, quite simply because, you know, he I'm pretty sure Barcelona got him on a free, what would be six, seven months ago maybe he joined, and now it's looking like he's going to go for 20-something million, that is a lot of money for a player that's going to be good for a season or two and even then we don't know that coming back to the Premier League he is going to be as good as he had been in his prime at Arsenal the numbers at Barcelona were pretty decent but you got to remember the sort of quality there's a little bit of a drop-off compared to the Premier League clubs and playing in this Chelsea team as an attacker isn't the easiest thing you know with the way we're set up it's very heavily focused on keeping those clean sheets and then getting the goals when the chances come now Bamiang does suit that when he was at Arsenal and he was in his prime you would definitely say that you know you give that guy a chance and he generally will put it in the back of the net so a good thing for Chelsea to get this guy over the line it doesn't block future things for things like Breuer or Kai Havertz I guess if we're going to deploy him as a striker so all in all I think it could be a good one and I'm open for it it's just the fee is so high and if it's the first offer of 14 million is rejected which it has been I can only imagine that this fee might reach 20, 25, 30 million, and that's just a lot of money for someone of that age. 
Then the next thing to consider with this, we have Fabrizio Romano saying nothing has changed about the Marcus Lanzo deal. Full verbal agreement in place to join Barcelona, but it won't be completed until Koundé is registered. It takes time. Alonso agreed personal terms with Barca four months ago. Deal will be valid until June 2025. Now the only reason I bring this up is, I guess, it's an update on the whole situation. He is going to leave. It is going to happen. But I wonder if Chelsea could use this as a bit of leverage. I've heard that the chances of this turning into a swap deal with cash for Aubameyang is very unlikely because about um, Barcelona need to, you know, the finances need to be done in a certain way that benefits the club. Um, so the chances of that happening is unlikely, but could Chelsea throw their weight around and say, look, Marcus Alonso, we still have the opportunity to reject this and, and not let you have this player, knock that price down on Aubameyang, and then everyone can be happy. I'm sure the Chelsea bosses will have considered this, and maybe it's not the kind of thing that they do, I don't know. But to me, we have a little bit of a leverage here. They obviously have a lot of leverage, given that they're going to make us pay 20 plus million for a Bamiang, which seems crazy. But we do have something on our side that could potentially help us get a lower fee for someone like a Bamiang. Then we have this report coming through the standard saying Chelsea's interest in Wesley Fofana could force Trevor Chalobah to look for a summer exit and we've seen reports of that recently and I'm really not enjoying the idea of that. While Brighton have confirmed a desire to sign Wanderway midfielder Billy Gilmore and that's an interesting one. I think Billy Gilmore's shown glimpses at Chelsea that looked brilliant, like he looks so good but you know the loan spells recently and it doesn't really fit into the plans it seems at Chelsea so the fact that he is apparently a want away, he's looking for a move, it does make sense, um, and Brighton probably could be, I could see him doing really well at a club like Brighton, I honestly could, and of course they've lost someone like Basuma as well, so whilst he might not have the physical stature of uh, Basuma, he does have that good passing range, a bit of good dribbling ability at times, um, but he's still a bit raw, you know, he still needs to work on his, on his craft, and then Trevor Chalabert could be looking for a summer exit, I'd be sad to see this one happen because I really don't think Trevor Chalobah has done much wrong. Like, don't get me wrong, he has the odd mistake in him here or there. He pushes up when he should have stayed with the back line and these little things here and there. But generally shows that he's such a good player and I feel like this is another situation that's similar to the Fikayo Tomori one where we've let him go because he maybe was a little raw at times. And now look at him doing wonders out at AC Milan and I think we could come to regret if we let Trevor Chalobah go as well. Then we have an update from Fabrizio Urbano saying Emerson Palmieri deal is off for West Ham confirmed. No agreement on the salary despite a deal close to being completed with Chelsea as called earlier by Jack Rosser. And then it says Chelsea insists they want around 20 million to sell Emerson. No way for a loan move as of now. So that one's not happening. They were close so maybe they were offering you know 17 million something like that. Chelsea was saying, look, this just has to go a little higher and we can accept it. That seemed like it would be the case, but salary became the issue. West Ham not capable of offering whatever Chelsea are currently paying Emerson. And it's a shame because I really thought we were going to get some good money for an actually quite decent player that I wouldn't have minded sticking around in all honesty. And salary becomes the issue, which is a big shame, but I'm sure there'll be other suitors for Palmieri, Emerson Palmieri. So maybe this transfer window but it might have to get delayed further back maybe to the january transfer window but that's going to be the end of the video guys if you did enjoy leave a like hit subscribe with the notification bell and you'll never miss a future video don't forget we're going for 200 likes on this video so please 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 hit that like button i'll see you on the next one guys thank you for watching goodbye